How's it going, guys? Lung cancer pneumoconiosis, USMLA, so small cell lung cancer. Smoking, biggest risk factor. They want you to know it's hyalur slash medial, okay? And so the lung cancers that start with a s sound for central, okay? So central, small cell, squamous cell. Those are the ones that are central slash hyalur. The other ones that don't have the s sound, adenocarcinoma, large cell, they're not central. Okay, so small basophilic means purple cells, extremely buzzy image for small cell here. And the NBME, I've seen them describe it as twice the size of lymphocytes. You're like, holy shit, that sounds big. It's fucking small cell, okay? They're audacious that way. Now the perineal plastics, exceedingly high yield, SIADH. So ADH is gonna cause increased free water reabsorption from the medullary collecting duct of the kidney, cause hyponatremia, concentrated urine with increased urinary specific gravity, Cushing syndrome doesn't have to be buffalo hump, purple striae, moon facies. It can be things like osteoporosis, avascular necrosis of the femoral head, Lambert-Eaton syndrome. Uh, obviously, it's going to be antibodies against uh, presynaptic voltage-gated calcium channels. Uh, don't confuse that with myasthenia gravis, which is a sometimes a perineal plastic of thymoma, which will be antibodies against postsynaptic nicotinic acetylcholine receptors. So Lambert-Eaton syndrome will get better with the proximal muscle weakness and improves with movement. Myasthenia gravis uh, gets worse with movement. And then you can also get cerebellar dysfunction slash neuropathy due to anti hue anti yo antibodies in small cell. It's known to be asked on the eosimile. Chemotherapy is the answer they want straight up. Don't do surgery. Surgery is the answer for non-small cell, which just refers to all other lung cancers. Squamous cell carcinoma, as I just inculcated, uh, along with small cell, there, it's going to be the s sound. So those are the central ones. So smoking for both squamous and small cell. And then this image of the keratin pearls, okay, the squamous pearls, these pink circles, extremely buzzy, not limited to squamous cell of the lung, could be squamous cell of the skin. It can cavitate grossly, okay? So if they just tell you there's a lung cancer and there's a it's a central lung cancer with a cavitation. They list small cells, squamous cell, et cetera. Students not sure. It's fucking easy. I mean, squamous cell is the one that cavitates. Okay, so our perineoplastic being PTHRP, that's going to act like PTH, increase serum calcium, decrease serum phosphate, but it's not the same as endogenous PTH. It actually suppresses endogenous PTH due to the high calcium. So if you ask students what the PTH level is in squamous cell, they'll say, oh, it's increased. It's not fucking increased, it's decreased, okay? So you'll get a lung cancer where calcium's high, phosphate's low, and they tell you the PTH level is low normal or low, and that's squamous cell, all right? Now, as I just fucking harped on, PTH is going to be low. Adenocarcinoma, so it's a cancer of glands. You might get a vignette where uh, they tell you... Um, there is no glandular or squamous morphology. And so it means, well, it's not squamous cell carcinoma, it's not adenocarcinoma, and you're left with EG small cell as the answer. Okay, it's how they'll do it. So you need to know uh, glandular is just adenocarcinoma. And then classically female non-smokers, doesn't have to be female, I'm just telling you what's very textbook slash classic. But if you get a non-smoker with a lung cancer, it's gonna be adenocarcinoma. And it's thought that it's accepted that ground radiation uh, due to radon is a cause of lung cancer in non-smokers. There's an NBME question where they say, dude's in a basement, living in a basement with lung cancer and it's adenocarcinoma. Okay, and so as I just said, if it's not small cell or squamous cell, it's gonna be peripheral or apical. Pancose tumors, right? So if adenocarcinoma can be apical slash peripheral, but if you have a tumor that's at the top of the, the lung apice, uh, apex, then Pankos tumor can cause impingement on the superior cervical ganglia, and that can cause uh, partial ptosis, anhydrosis, and meiosis, okay? So high yield Horner syndrome. I'd say four out of five questions, Horner syndrome and eosomelia's Pankos tumor, one out of five will be lateral medullary syndrome, okay? Stroke syndrome. SVC syndrome, brachiocephalic syndrome. So you need to know that Pankos tumors can cause impingement of venous return back to the right heart. They can say that there's flushing of the face, okay, or congestion of neck veins, and positive Pemberin sign is worsening of the neck slash facial congestion when the arms are raised above the head. Migratory thrombophlebitis, true suicidal malignancy is not limited to head of pancreas cancer, so you can get it with adenocarcinoma of the lung. Phlebitis is inflammation of veins, thrombophlebitis, inflammation of veins due to thrombi. 
and migratory means can uh, occur at multiple locations over time. So they might say arith asymmetric erythematous uh, nodules on the arms and trunk in someone with cancer, and it can be head of pancreas adenocarcinoma, it can be pulmonary bronchogenic adenocarcinoma. And this is unrelated to hypercoagulal state due to malignancy in general, okay? Basically, any cancer is considered to cause hypercoagulable state, but it's especially pronounced with adenocarcinomas. And one potential mechanism is that adenocarcinomas can secrete tissue factor, which can in turn increase the cladding cascade activity. So hypertrophic osteoarthropathy, aka osteoarthropathia hypertrophicans, is going to be clubbing plus hand pain in a patient with lung cancer. So I've seen the mastitis on 2CK, for instance, where they'll just give you clubbing, joint pain in the hands, and they say, which the following is the most appropriate next best step? In, in a smoker, they'll say that. And they'll say, which the following is the next best step of management? And the answer is chest x-ray. And it's like, even if you don't know what's going on, the fact that they give you basically a two-liner and they say the dude's a smoker, that can make it easier, all right? Thought to be due to fibrovascular proliferation and uh, the association with, is the association is with adenocarcinomas, but not 100% specific that way. It can be any lung cancer, large cell, non-existent eosinophilia. I don't think I've ever seen not at, not I don't think I have never seen a large cell uh, lung cancer question on step one, step two, uh, NBMEs offline, online combined, garbage diagnosis for eosinophilia. And then just real quick, those of you studying for two CK three, you got to know that a patient must have. Uh, all three criteria, age 50 to 80, 20, pack, 20 plus pack years you're smoking, smoked in the past 15 years, then they do a low dose annual CT. It used to be high yield uh, over a decade ago when I sat the 2CK that there was no lung cancer screening, but starting probably uh, eight-ish years ago from the time of this clip, uh, they started doing lung cancer screening. So bronchogenic carcinoid tumor, you need to know exists. Okay, so carcinoid tumors in general tend to be appendiceal or small bowel, uh, but they can occur in the lung. I've seen it on NBME exams. They secrete serotonin slash serotonin derivatives, can cause flushing, tachycardia, diaphoresis, uh, can cause tricuspid valve uh, vegetations with regurge, and you're diagnosed with 5-hydroxyindole acetic acid, 5-HIAA in the urine. Type of neuroendocrine tumor. Mesothelioma, okay, it's this image here of the of the white uh, rind essentially encasing the lung circumferentially is very fuzzy, this image, okay? So it occurs secondary to as, as asbestosis, and it's not going to be immediate. It can occur decades later. I'll talk about asbestosis as we, move, as we go through, but uh, shipyard construction workers, okay, buzzy for occupational exposure. And you can just be aware that calretinin, Posit positivity that can be seen with mesothelioma. Uh, there's a question on uh, one of the NBME exams where they show you this image, and then the answer is just mesothelial cells. You know what's hilarious? I just fucking wrote it right here because I, I wasn't reading my own slide, but that's something you got to know. Okay, mesothelial cells. It's obvious, but it's just there you go. And now, real quick, it, it's I'm just going to mention a, a few respiratory cancers that aren't in the lung. Okay, just because of their yieldness. Just be aware, Epstein Barr virus can cause nasopharyngeal carcinoma. It's a type of squamous cell carcinoma. Be aware of laryngeal carcinoma due to smoking. is going to be squamous cell carcinoma as well. It can spread to cervical lymph nodes. Asked on US Millie. It's not that you have to memorize it. You just say, well, it, there, it's in the cervical area, isn't it? Lung cancer tends to go to the hilar lymph nodes. Breast cancer tends to go to the axillary lymph nodes. And then be aware of laryngeal papillomatosis. Not even cancer. I'm just miscellaneously throwing this in here because of its yieldness, right? So just be aware that vertical transmission of HPV 6 and 11 to neonates can cause warts of the vocal cords. So they'll show you images like this. And the answer is just HPV 6 or 11, okay? Laryngeal papillomatosis. Now going to the pneumoconiosis, asbestosis, as I just mentioned before, shipyard construction work is very buzzy. The super diaphragmatic and pleural plaques, soft tissue plaques or soft tissue densities seen on chest x-ray is an extremely important detail. You got to know, okay? And then this ferruginous body, see how it looks like a dumbbell, okay? So this is called a ferruginous body, something about how it can accumulate iron and secondary to the immune response to it. But this image is very high yield for asbestosis. Causes a restrictive lung pattern. And, and I made another presentation talking about uh, restrictive versus obstructive. But 
um, what the Yosemite can do is show you this image here, and then they ask you which cell initiates pulmonary fibrosis. The answer is macrophage. This isn't unique to asbestosis, but I'm, t I'm telling you what's shown up on NBME exam, where if you have some sort of offending agent that over time accumulates in the lungs and you could in theory get fibrosis as a result, uh, they, if they ask what cell initiates fibrosis, choose macrophage for it. Beryliosis, you need to know is aeronautical industry, okay, spaceships, uh, it, it's granulomatous, okay, so I've seen this detail about granulomas, I've seen show up once in an NBME exam, uh, where they basically gave you a vignette of something and they, they said there's no granulomas as seen on biopsy and you were able to eliminate sarcoidosis and borreliosis from that, okay? And I've had students say, well, how do you how do you eliminate borreliosis? You say, well, isn't that usually aeronautical industry? Plus, they say there's no granulomas there. Silicosis, okay? So eggshell calcifications, so it's sand, silicon dioxide. So stone quarry workers, but I've seen any of me say foundry. You say, what the fuck's a foundry, right? Well, that's metal working, okay? So that can lead to silicosis and... This detail about eggshell calcification is, although very buzzy, basically non-existent on Yosemilia. I'm just saying it because if I don't mention it, students will be like, oh, OMG, Mike, isn't that eggshell calcifications? Yeah, but Yosemilia doesn't give a fuck. What you could be aware of is that uh, silicosis increases the risk for TB. It's something about uh, impairing the ability of alveolar macrophages to phagocytose uh, TB properly. So TB infections increase risk. So you avoid anti-TNF alpha drugs in patients who have silicosis because these drugs increase the risk for TB. Anthracosis, okay, coal miner's lung, black discoloration of the lung can be either obstructive or restrictive as per the literature, but you just got to know it exists, not, not rocket science, not difficult. Kaplan syndrome, okay, so not with a K, with a C. So that's going to be rheumatoid arthritis plus any pneumoconiosis presenting as pulmonary nodules, okay? So rheumatoid arthritis plus neutropenia and or pancytopenia, or just pancytopenia, that's gonna be Felty syndrome. Rheumatoid arthritis plus a pneumoconiosis is gonna be Kaplan syndrome, okay? So just patients with RA, they're at increased risk for developing pneumoconiosis. It's a long discussion, rheumatoid arthritis, but you can get rheumatoid lung which is a, a fibrotic lung disease due to the autoimmune disease itself. Methotrexate, first line DMAR, DMAR for RA, causes pulmonary fibrosis. And then in combination, that probably increases the risk for uh, pneumoconiosis. All right, so that's a quick presentation here. Obviously, I'm, I'm going to make more content, so uh, subscribe to my channels, and I appreciate your time. That's it.